So, God has been speaking to me about his awesome blessings for us today. It's better than your birthday. It's better than Christmas. God's gifts for you each day. So, my greatest gift is Jesus. For God so loved me, he gave me the gift of his son, Jesus. And Jesus' greatest gift for me was his suffering death on a cross. We have to put them as the supreme gifts from God. And then we can have the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit's love, joy, and peace. We don't have to wait till Christmas to be happy. We don't have to wait till our birthday to be happy. We can enjoy God's awesome gifts for us now. Jesus' love for us, what a gift. Father God's love for us, what a gift. For God so loved me, he gave his son for me. For Jesus so loved me, he suffered and died on the cross for my sins, so that I could be friends with God. So I could get the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I could experience love, joy, and peace from God's presence. So, it's like the Bible says, the Lord will take good care of me. Like Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Jesus could just speak a word and he can feed 5,000 people. God could just drop food out of the sky for the children of Israel in the desert for 40 years. God can make a widow's jar to never run out of oil and flour. It's like I discovered some scripture in Job where it says we can laugh at destruction. We can laugh at famine and trust that God's in it to help us through it and bring good out of it for us. He's not like a human parent that's selfish and abandons their children. He's like... God is totally different than a sinful human being. God is always there. God is perfect. God is love. God's a very present help in times of trouble. It's like you could just rest in God like a little child on their father's knee or something. It's like Jesus will be speaking prophetically things to me like, uh, I'm always here. Enjoy me now. Relax in me. And uh, we need to listen to what God's telling us. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. I speak to them. And he goes along with scripture. So when you know the scripture and you hear the voice loudly speaking, do not fear, I am here. Then you don't have to fear. And uh, in God's presence is a fullness of joy. That's quite a gift, a fullness of joy. And we don't come into God's presence through our good works, are you good enough yet, type thing. It's through faith in what Christ did for us. His free, awesome gift of righteousness for us. His blood that takes all our sins away. So we can come boldly into the presence of Father God and enjoy His presence. Which includes a fullness of joy. What the Bible says about the gifts from God is true. If we believe in them, we will receive them. If we doubt in them, we'll miss out on them. These are the gifts of God. God feeding you, God clothing you, God making you joyful. It's not us trying to do it ourselves with the things of the world, idols and everything. That doesn't make us very happy. The money, the drugs, the sex, the rock and roll, whatever. The entertainments. It's getting closer to God. It's about waiting upon God. It's about it, uh, asking Jesus what he wants to do. It's getting an answer back. It's starting to do it not in your power, but in his power. With his wisdom. I'm not trusting in my muscles. I'm trusting in God's muscles to help me. I'm not trusting in my wisdom. I'm trusting in God's wisdom to help me. I'm not trusting in my bank account. I'm trusting in my perfect Father God's bank account. Trusting in my perfect husband, Jesus' bank account. So, God can teach us great things about how great he is. And he can tell us about all the gifts he has for us now. We can enjoy them now. I don't have to wait for Christmas. I don't have to wait for my birthday. I can have the Holy Spirit now to fill me with joy. I can be in God's presence now to fill me with joy. I can trust in God, not Rod, to have perfect peace. 
If we believe in these things, we can experience them emotionally. If we doubt in these things, we will miss out on these things. But we're in a spiritual war with Satan, and Satan wants to be our gift from God stealer, our truth stealer, our joy stealer, love stealer. It's like when I ask God what's the greatest thing you've ever seen with your eyes. He showed me a vision of Jesus dying on the cross. And when I asked God, what was the greatest thing you've ever seen me do? And he said, take communion and give me thanks for the greatest gift I ever gave you, my son Jesus. That's what God's looking for, thanksgiving for all of his awesome gifts. It's like I had this vision one time of Jesus in my bedroom, all dressed up in a king outfit with robe and everything. And I was like... Uh, fearful of why am I getting this vision of Jesus here, sort of like Isaiah or something in Isaiah 6. I was saying something like, what do you want me to do, Jesus? What do you want me to do, Jesus? Well, I'll do anything to please you. You're here or something. And Jesus just said to me, just thank me. He wants us to put our attention on what he's done for us, not what we can do for him. Unless it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> But that shows us who we're trusting in for the blessings ourselves, to bless ourselves, our wisdom, our strength, our bank account, or thank you, God, for your wisdom you give me, your muscle that you protect me with, um, your bank account that you provide things for me. So we shouldn't fear destitution in the future. If they want to give us the mark of the beast, we just got to say, no thanks, God can take care of me in the wilderness for 40 years if he wants to. We do what God tells us to do and believe in the miraculous. That when we need to see a miracle, we'll see a miracle. If we don't need to see a miracle yet, we won't see a miracle yet. Like Jesus said, it's better to believe in him without seeing a lot of miracles. The children of Israel could see miracles at the Red Sea, but then forget about God the next day. It's not about seeing miracles, because Satan can twist your mind around and say, that wasn't true, that didn't happen, or something. So I'm saying in the spiritual war, Satan's always trying to rob us of our awesome gifts from God which he wants to give us. Satan says don't read the Bible. Don't find out what kind of gifts God wants to give you. Don't receive them by faith. Therefore people don't experience much from God because they're listening to Satan say that's not true. Don't believe that. Make yourself happy with the things of the world like everybody else. Instead, we need to look into the Word, find out what God's awesome gifts are for us, receive them by faith, save me from my sins, God, through the cross, fill me with the Holy Spirit, God, help me into your presence now, show me any wicked sin in my heart and help me to repent of it. Then we'll be in God's presence, then we'll experience a fullness of joy, and then we'll have the Holy Spirit's love, joy, and peace in our life. If we believe in these things, we can receive these things, and all God wants back is a thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for helping me for 60 years on this planet. Uh, thank you, God, for heaven still yet to come for me. Thank you for the good things you're doing in my life today. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in that. Give thanks in all things. I didn't create my body. Um, I don't create this supernatural love, joy, and peace from the Holy Spirit. Being a Christian. I don't have the knowledge to try to be able to teach people the truth you teach me or something. Like Paul said, it's no longer I live, it's Christ who lives in me. If we let Jesus do it through us, it comes out pretty good. If we try to do it in the flesh, it's nothing. So I could be speaking truth to people on video. It's got to be the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, what Rod is saying is true, believe it. And stop listening to Satan saying, what Rod is saying is not true, don't believe it. Now, if you think you got to earn them and you're never good enough or whatever Satan's telling you, you got to get rid of those old ways to think. It's free. It's not like the Roman Catholic doctrine where you get into heaven through good works or something. It's through Jesus dying on a cross, his good works, applied to our account, his perfect righteousness. You can't do a good work without the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. you got to get that gift in you. Then you can produce some love or some joy or peace once Jesus is living in you, the Holy Spirit's living in you. It's all free. And all God wants you to do is thank him for these awesome gifts. 
So I got a motto, something like, uh, I have to live in an evil and suffering world, but God can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, help me not to be bothered by it, and make me happy in it. So let's give thanks to God taking communion. Let's be pleasing to him, do what he delights in. I asked God what was the greatest thing you ever seen me do, and he said, take communion and give thanks to him for the greatest gift he ever gave me, his own son Jesus on the cross. So we should celebrate the gift of the cross. We should celebrate the free gift of righteousness. We should celebrate the blood of Jesus cleansing us from all sin. We should celebrate having access into the presence of God as a gift. We should celebrate the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, Christ living in us, doing good things out through us. And give thanks to him for them. Thank you, God, for these many, many awesome gifts. Thank you for the death of your son Jesus on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for suffering on the cross for me. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And just be excited and joyful with awesome God and his gifts and try to tell other people that they can have a relationship like you do with awesome God and get the gifts from him too. If they want him. So that's a bit about uh, God's awesome gifts for us.